All right, so your studio photography is not improving, and here's why. You guys ask too many questions. What settings am I using? The settings I'm using don't matter because you wouldn't get the same results I'm getting if you were to use the same thing. First off, I have a very huge studio space. Can you take a step forward? Not too forward, take a step back. Unless you have the same studio space I have. But if you don't, giving you the settings I use wouldn't really matter. So that being said, I'll still give you the settings by the way. ISO 160 F5, shutter speed mode of 160. In the studio, right, the only good thing, or the only, um, there are only two settings that matter when you're using the camera. That's when, you, when you're coupling the camera with um, an off-camera flash. Your ISO and your f-stop. Your ISO to make the camera sensitive to light, your f-stop to either allow ambient light to enter or just get the light coming in from the strobe. Your shutter speed doesn't matter. It only matters if you slow it down to like eighth of a second or fifth of a second. But if you are somewhere around 1 over 160, 1 over 100, 1 over even 80, I don't think it will affect the outcome of your image. So we'll be looking at just the ISO and the F. Like I said, stop asking me the settings I used for the shoot and practice with your own settings. Just know whatever it is you need to do in the studio. All right, so first thing I need to do is to make sure my ambient light is not affecting my frame. So a quick test shot to show that that's fine. I can see some amount of light in there. I will increase, no, I'll reduce the exposure to 125. Fine, increase the f-stop. Okay, I think I'm okay with this ambient light, then switch on my flash. Like I said, or oh, I haven't mentioned it, I have the 8600 in the 120 parabolic. I have the VA60 Mark II strip box behind the terrain here, and this for my key light. So we'll take a nice shot. Right, yeah, turn the body that way. No, don't go too far. Yeah, that's fine. So after taking the shot with this light turned on, I feel it's too moody and too dark. So I'll open up my key light to 1 over 8, which of course doesn't matter because you still have to play along with the settings. And I like this. All right. Turn down. No, no, no. The same pose is fine. Yeah. Bring your right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bend the left hand. Beautiful. Let's keep that. Chin down. Open your lips. Yep. And that's fine. Okay, second thing you need to consider and why your studio photography is not improving is the use of wrong modifiers for the kind of photography you're doing. So here I'm doing a fashion photography, right? And I need everything to be as moody as possible. Well, for all the high fashions I've seen, mostly they are shooting with hard lights. I want to use hard lights because of the nice makeup, which she did, by the way. I don't want to use hard lights. I'm using the 120 deep parabolic to mimic the sun, but a softer sun. I don't know if you get what I mean. But yeah, all I'm trying to say is use the right modifier for the right uh, kind of photography you're doing. This rim is to cut hair from the background, so I'll put up an image on the screen for you to see what this is doing in the image and what that is also doing. Right, so let's do that. Let me turn off the rim light or let me turn on the rim light and take a photo. And that is what the rim light is doing in the image, separating her from the background. Then this key light without the rim light. Let's try and keep the same pose. Then I'll turn on both the rim light and the key light. And this is what that is doing. So as you guys can see, I have my bounce card here. What this is also doing is bouncing back light onto my subject, filling in whatever it is it has to fill, giving, giving me the opportunity to open up my shadows when I am post-processing 
the particular image I just shot either in Lightroom or Capture One or Photoshop. Right, so that's why your studio photography is not improving. Like I said, you have to make sure you know what modifier you're using. Okay, let's take a couple more. Right, so face me directly. Yeah, and just open the legs up. Wow. Okay. Kindly take a little step forward, not too much, take a step back. Great. Turn down. Yeah. Put the other right here, so the two hands here. Great. And just play along with it. Right. There's another thing I want you to consider. Why your studio photography is not improving? The usage of wrong lighting styles. So if you take a look at the softbox I'm using, come let them see how I've positioned the softbox. You realize it's not directly hitting her. If I should draw an imaginary line from the 120 parabolic, I can tell you the edge of the light is actually hitting my subject. Then I have majority of the light filling in in front here, and that's why this bounce card is here to bounce back light onto my subject. Right. Also, by positioning this key light that way, I'm getting light hitting my background to create that dramatic feel. That's what I mean by putting this directly on there. And I'll put up an image of what I shot. Okay, so back. There's a light directly on our beautiful model. You can see um, that separation where you feel like this side of the face is well lit and that side of the face becomes a little bit darker. The background now gets a lot of light. Now let me move just so that that imaginary line from this parabolic cuts across the face. What I am doing right now is um, the feathering technique or the feathering kind of lighting style. And as much as it's a two light setup, I can make this soft light even more softer. And no, feathering doesn't make light soft, it evens out your lighting. Right, so with this in mind, I'll still take the same photo, then that evens out what I said. Now, you have a darker background, good for separation. This remains my subject to separate her the more, then the majority of the light evened out across her face. And that's a lovely photo. Wait. Yeah, this. So between this and this. Which one do you prefer? This one. Right. So she prefers that one. So you should know the lighting style you're using. Practice it. Don't just watch this video and say, oh, Joey said this, so I'm also going to do the same thing. Practice it yourself and become a master of what you do. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is color combinations. Right. So I asked our beautiful model here to provide me with um, the outfits. I mean, I mean, pictures of outfit choices she had, right? And I had to pick. This backdrop I took from a friend just yesterday because he mentioned it was green and I know she was going to put on something brown and the next outfit will probably be white with all those colors. So having those colors in mind, I know my subject is, should I say melanin, brown? She's a beautiful melanin brown model. Let's, let's, let's add all the two. Right, and she has a brown outfit on she, and complementing the brown outfit, I have to use this green backdrop. Right, so all I'm trying to say is, get your color combinations right when you're shooting in the studio. And this even applies generally everywhere. Because if you take a look at this, if I was to shoot her with um, a different color on this green background, let's say blue, blue wouldn't have been perfect for this particular shoot. So getting your color combinations right is also a good thing. Next, you need to figure out your angles. I've provided a video where I used the 50 millimeter lens and I spoke about angles, right? So this is me shooting her on the eye level. And this is me shooting her above eye level. One last thing. There's a reason why I am using the 100 millimeter lens. So if, I don't know if you've seen any videos going out, 
um, where they explain lenses and why you should use particular lenses. When I use a wide lens, right, um, I'm going to get to the whole studio in the frame. My focus is to take her, I mean, take a picture of her just so that she looks good. That is the aim of a photographer, is to make anybody look good in camera, right? So if the 100 millimeter is a good lens for this kind of shoot, I'm going to use it. Mostly for fashion shoots, you're looking at a 50 millimeter lens, a 35 millimeter lens, an 85. I am using a 100 just because I want the compression from the image to look good. Like what I see with my eyes is what I want to see here in camera. Let me try and switch and put the 50 millimeter on for you to see how this works. And why I'm using the 100 millimeter rather than the 50 millimeter. So this is the 50. With the 50, I can get very close. I can even get full images. But if I shoot eye level, this is how it looks. If I shoot above eye level, this is how it also looks. Comparing these two images I shot with the previous 100 millimeter, with the 100 millimeter, you feel that you are there with the subject you're shooting. You have that good compression rate between the subject and the background. The 100, you get that compression where what you see is what you get. So mostly it's good to have these zoom lenses or macro lenses or portrait lenses. So an 85 will do, a um, 100 will do, a 200 millimeter lens will do. Not in the studio, but in the studio, if you have, unless you have a huge studio space, but if you don't, maybe the 50 will do, but not as much as when I was using a 100 millimeter. All right, so these are why I think your studio photography is not improving. So I would like you to go practice, learn, and still practice and become good at what you do. Thank you for watching this video. And I'll see you, wait, before I go, don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to leave a handle down in the description box below. Go check it out. Go follow her. Do you need a follow account? Yeah, everybody needs a follow account. I also leave my handle down in the description. Kindly follow me. Check out my digital store on skakopel.com. Most of the images I'll be putting up will be color graded with my presets. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.